Hey guys, Veronica here. I'm out in the field today and I've been out here working all day and I have not finished my homework yet as far as um, identifying all of the plants. Well, I actually have most of them identified. I just don't understand all of their functions. So we're saving that video for next week. But I did want to cover something that I've been working with very intimately today and that's green manure, specifically cover crops. So one of my plans for this space is to always have plant coverage on the soil. Because this is heavy clay, because you can see it's like cracking and totally dried out, it's much better to have roots in that soil and also just start building more topsoil with plants. So the first plant that I chose to do this was back a couple of months ago before I even moved, but I knew we needed to get something in the field because when the rains come, anything that even remotely resembles topsoil just gets washed down the road um, to a lower point of elevation. So I went to the feed store, got the only thing they really had, which was a bag of um, winter Austrian peas, Austrian winter peas, and decided that even though I didn't know very much about my soil yet, um, putting in something that's nitrogen fixing would probably help uh, with the crops that I was planning on, that I'm planning on planting. So I want to talk about nitrogen fixing legumes because it was something, that, it's some, one of those things that like you hear a lot where it's like, oh, nitrogen fixing cover crop, peas and beans and clover, nitrogen fixing. And um, wrapping your brain around what nitrogen fixation actually is, uh, is something that like was totally lost to me for years until I started working a little bit more with these plants. And so if you look around me here, I'm surrounded by all of these winter peas still growing really strong. I've actually been eating a lot of them um, just in like salads and stir fries and stuff because they're really delicious. But we've mowed now down to um, kind of a high mow. So it was uh, three and a half or four inches. And in there, I'm putting in my rows that I'm going to be planting in. Now in between the rows, what I'm doing is basically just having a bunch of cover crops. They all are going to have different functions. But I started with nitrogen fixation because every single plant that we like to grow in the summertime needs a load of nitrogen for the most part. So um, what is nitrogen fixation? Basically, and I'll pull one of these out so I can show you, um, what happens is that there's a bacteria in the soil and it lives there year round and it's called um, rhizobia and rhizobia <laughs> and it's called rhizobia and you'll see on this little plant um, all of these little white nodules that are kind of pinkish nodules that are on the stem here or on the roots here sorry it's been a long day <laughs> um, so all of these little pinkish white nodules are actually formed by the pea in response to the rhizobia living in the soil. So what happens is that when you plant the pea and the pea starts growing, it basically secretes flavonoids from all of these roots. And then that alerts the rhizobia in the soil to come and show up and interact with this plant. Now the rhizobia basically secretes something called nod factors and those nod factors make the roots react and swell and you end up with all of these little nodules which is where the rhizobia end up living. Now this is the part of the plant that is um, basically fixing, fixing the nitrogen in your soil and what that means is that at this point once the plant is infected by its symbiotic uh, partner and it becomes a host for it, then it's able to pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere because it's all around us at all times. And it's able to put that in the soil for it to use and grow even bigger and greener. Now, when this plant dies, what happens is all of the nitrogen that it's fixed in the soil then becomes bioavailable to whatever else you want to plant. So you basically have nitrogen fertilizer in your soil from another plant without adding all of the additional salts and all the additional costs. And so the plan is to just kind of keep mowing these until they die back as it gets warm. Uh, there will be beans going in in the summer to continue this process as well as some other crops like some clover. And we're going to try and figure out what other covers we need based on how our soil tests come back. But I just thought that this is like, this is a really fascinating thing that there's just this 
um, essentially garden buddy waiting in your soil to help you out. And so one of the other things I want to talk about is part of the reason I'm going no-till is because of stuff like this. So my thought process goes that if when the plant dies, um, whether it's from tilling or whether it's just from cutting it and letting it go until it's too hot and it can't function anymore, because peas don't like super hot weather, they're more of a cool season crop. Um, so when the plant dies and the nitrogen's fixed in the soil, the if you go in and you till it, because I think that the classic thought is sort of, okay, well you till and then that adds um, organic matter to things that are like heavy clay or you know, just like really compacted soils, you're adding that organic matter. But what happens is, at least what I think happens is, is when you till it, you're actually killing off um, this rhizobia, uh, the rhizobium, and you're releasing some of that nitrogen to some extent because it's exposed to the atmosphere, to wind and rain and, um, you know, everything else. And so I want to keep this, I want to keep all of this bacteria, I want to keep all of the nitrogen, except for the example plant, in my soil. And that's why I'm mowing it instead of tilling it, because that's going to help keep all of that in the soil rather than losing something like half or a third or a quarter. I don't want to lose any of it. I want it in the soil, ready to go. And also, all of the plant matter, because we're mowing it, is going to start accumulating on the surface of this clay and start building topsoil. It's going to break down as we get wind and weather and rain and basically create a really nice soil layer so that we don't have crazy runoff. Because the roots are still intact in the clay, um, then they're able to hold the soil in place. The stems of the mowed stuff is able to hold the soil in place. It creates still, you know, the ecology is still functional there because the soil is shaded so the bacteria is not going to melt down as quickly and all of the other microbes and stuff. I've been very excited today because I've been um, just kind of, I don't have a broad fork, so I'm using like a lawn aerator, which has been miserable, but I've just been creating contours and rows to plant in because we're expecting rain. And um, it was really exciting because it was the first time that I worked in this field since I started with the cover crops and I'm actually seeing uh, invertebrates and I'm seeing um, all kinds of crawly things in the dirt and it basically was devoid of life prior so I feel like we're on the right track. Um, I don't think that you can ever go wrong with a nitrogen fixer in your soil even if you don't know your soil type like adding some peas or beans or clover um, even alfalfa although I'm not planning on that because I don't want you know like just it gets overwhelming with alfalfa but um, like adding you know peas beans clover is is just something you can squeeze into almost any garden to help cover your soil, to help fix your nitrogen, and to potentially provide you a crop, but definitely provide, you know, like bees and other insects nectar at some point in the season. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I will do my best to answer them. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention <laughs> before I close this down is that uh, rhizobia cannot function independently. So they exist in the soil, but you have to give them their micro partner in order for them to help fix your nitrogen. So just things to keep in mind. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, follow me on Instagram at FlavorKit and hit that subscribe button if you like this sort of information, which I don't know who wouldn't, but you know, your mileage may vary. So until next time, happy gardening.